So the struggle is that you know to really captivate an audience, you have to have stage presence. And you kind of know that if you were more comfortable and stopped overthinking and self-sabotaging and doubting yourself, you'd be able to have more stage presence and then you'd be able to draw the audience in. Or maybe you think that stage presence is something you either have or you don't have. Well, I can tell you for certain the latter isn't true. Stage presence is something that you can learn. It is a skill you can learn. And it is indeed all to do with feeling comfortable on stage. But how do you achieve that? Because you've probably tried all the old tricks and tips. You have tried making sure that you know your script if you're a public speaker or an actor. You have tried making sure that your vocal technique is bang on so that you can feel safe and secure when you go up on stage because maybe then you would stop doubting yourself. Well, I'm going to tell you today that is not the way to get comfortable on stage. And I'm going to give you some strategies to change that because that's what we're going to be talking about today on the Courageous Performer podcast. Hi, I'm Hattie Volker, founder of Find Your True Voice, and you can find me at findyourtruevoice.co.uk. And if this is something you're really struggling with, if you're really struggling to feel confident and capable of your best in front of an audience, reach out to me at Hattie, H-A-T-T-I-E, at findyourtruevoice.co.uk, and I'll reply to you personally. Let me know what's going on for you and what you're struggling with, because I have been through all of this. I was painfully shy as a child, and that's why I teach what I teach, because I know that anyone can feel comfortable and confident in front of any audience. So let's dive into stage presence. What is stage presence? all about? Well, it's quite interesting to think about because actually stage presence is all to do with being able to be present in the moment when you're on stage. It's that ability to feel comfortable so that you can connect with your audience when you are up in front of them, no matter who the audience is. And what gets in the way of that is often nerves and overthinking and Sometimes even the strategies that you've been given to give yourself confidence can actually make things worse. So for example, if you're aiming to nail everything, to get everything perfect, and you have practiced your script again and again, that can actually make you more nervous and more rigid and less present and in the moment than if you were less practiced with your script. So let me give you some strategies for how to be present. Number one, Get to know your material on a deeper level and get to really enjoy it because preparing for perfection can actually suck the joy out of the message you're given, giving. So whether it's a song or a speech, it doesn't really matter. There is a message that you're wanting to, to transmit and there's also an emotion that goes along with that. And if you've learnt it by rote and you've just learnt it again and again and again, you've probably forgotten what it is you really want to communicate to the audience. And actually, an audience will connect more with an emotional message than they do with simply all the right words in the right order on the right note if you're singing. And we can detach ourselves. When we over-prepare, we can detach ourselves from the meaning. And when we under-prepare, because you might find that in trying to get some level of security and comfort on stage, you over-prepare. You prepare and prepare and prepare right down to the tiny minutiae. And you've stripped the soul out of what you're doing. And you've forgotten what it is and what it means. What it means to you and what it could mean to the audience. Equally... That fear that you have over performing might have triggered you to procrastinate and not prepare as much. And then you haven't even given yourself a chance to connect with the material. So what is it you are performing? What's the reason you're performing it? Why would anyone want to listen to you? Because there will be a reason for them to listen to you. There's a reason they're there, whether it's for information or entertainment. If you can give something tangible and emotional for them to go away with, because even if it's a factual thing, there's an emotion they will want to go away with, even if that's that wonderful feeling of understanding and, I finally get this. That's a wonderful feeling for them to go away with. And that will help you connect with them and help you be present in the moment when you are truly delivering something that you feel something about, a positive thing about then you're more likely to be able to deliver than 
something that they will take away and use and remember. So reconnect with your material or if you haven't done it yet, connect with it because when you start to connect with it, when you start to really understand it, you can start to enjoy it more. And when you enjoy it more, that turns into stage presence because there's nothing more engaging than watching somebody who is enjoying what they are doing. And that's even if it's a tragic song or, or a tragic play, even if it's something really dry in topic, if the person really is committed to giving you something, then that in itself is engaging and will cause you to have more stage presence. So number one, connect or reconnect with your material so that you have a, a visceral and emotional connection with it that you can transmit to the audience. Number two, is how do you learn to like your audience? One of the, I ran a workshop a little while ago and one of the big takeaways somebody had from it was my <laughs> statement that the audience aren't assholes. Now, apologies for my language, but we can go into a situation believing that they're not very nice people, that they are gonna judge us the way we would judge us really harshly. We, we judge ourselves really harshly, harshly. And a lot of the people I work with, what they struggle with is that self-critical voice. We use it in order to make ourselves better, but it has this horrible impact on us. And then we start imagining that other people are going to judge us the same way. But the truth is, other people are generally much nicer to us than we are to ourselves. And if they're not, that's usually to do with their script that they're running and has got nothing to do with you. You could be someone completely different and they would still feel negative towards you. In fact, I had this, I was talking to somebody the other day and she was talking about how she knew someone who was always ultra critical of every soprano she listened to. And then this person realized that this was just the script this lady had running and had nothing to do with the sopranos that they were listening to. But mostly people want you to do a good job. Even in aud audition panels, they want you to be the right person because that solves their problem. They're looking for the right person. And if you come in and you are the sort of person they wanna work with or the sort of person they want to give the opportunity to, you've solved a problem for them. And generally people are nice. So how can you look at the audience and not judge them negatively? How can you look at them with warmth and understanding and thinking, what would make their day better? Because the interesting thing is, if you start to change the way you view your audience, what happens is you change the way you feel towards your audience. And that causes you to feel safer, safe enough to open up more. And when you open up more, you have more stage presence because you are more present. You're not hiding, you're not masking, you're not keeping small. You're allowing yourself to open up. And as you open up, it allows space for you to connect with your audience. And that is where stage presence come from, comes from. It's like, as the audience's perception of it, it's like the person on stage is talking directly to you. And that can be so enhanced if you like the people in front of you. And the wonderful thing about being a performer is you can just pretend they're nice. So even if they're not nice, if you pretend they're nice, you will feel more comfortable opening up, which means you will be more open. And actually, that means you're more likely to get a good response from them because when you're open and you have more stage presence, they get more from your performance and they think more kindly towards you. So the number two is how can you be kind towards your audience and view them as nice people, not nasty people who are going to judge you harshly, but nice people who want the best for themselves and for you. Now, the third thing can be the toughest thing, because this is about connecting with yourself and offering yourself some understanding. Now, to, to Give an example of this. I'm going to tell a story about a singer I worked with a number of years ago who was really terrified of people seeing how frightened she was. And as we unpicked this, what we realized was the majority of her fear came from her fear of people seeing her fear. And that was slightly ironic because actually 
When we are comfortable in our own discomfort, in a sense, when we're not afraid for people to see that we're slightly nervous about performing in front of them, we actually relax a bit more and can let go of 90% of that fear. Because being slightly nervous in front of an audience is an entirely natural and normal place to be. It's not inevitable, but there's nothing weak or stupid about it. And we tend to have that message to ourselves. People tend to have that message that if you show you are nervous, then it shows you are weak or you're unprofessional. And that message actually makes us feel even more worried. If they see we're unprofessional, well, that's the worst case scenario. But actually, I work with loads of professionals who are just as nervous as the amateurs I work with. So there's nothing professional or unprofessional about nerves. How we treat those nerves is really what makes or breaks us. And if you offer yourself some understanding in relation to nerves, the interesting thing is, instead of those nerves becoming overwhelming, which is what we fear, that if we actually allow those nerves in, they'll become overwhelming, what happens is we let go of them, which means we don't feel we need to hide as much, which means we can be present. And also in our nerves, what we tend to do is try and control the future and solve the past, which again means we're not present. If we're worried, we tend to think about the next high note or what we might forget in the next section or how that last bit didn't go very well and we hold on to that last bit and then we are not present and in the moment so we lack stage presence so those three things reconnect with your material really know and love and dive into what you want to share in your material number two connect with your audience be kind to them don't see them as a judgmental mass but see them as people who are there wanting something good from what you're doing and three reconnect with yourself be kind to yourself, offer yourself some understanding because then your nerves will subside and you won't feel the need to control everything, which will mean that you are able to be more present. When you connect with your material, you're more present. When you connect with your audience, you're more present. And when you connect and offer yourself some empathy, you can be more present. So if you feel you want some help with this, then connect with me at Hattie, H-A-T-T-I-E, at findyourtruevoice.co.uk because I know what it feels like to be where you are and I can offer you strategies and support in getting where you want to be.